Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, California Resources Corporation, Kern County Water Agency, Southern California Edison, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, and Bakersfield City School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. Thompson Junior High, home of the Timberwolves. We're here to do the math. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Do the Math. I'm Michael. And I'm Chuck. And I'm Mary Lou. You need help with your math homework today? Well, give us a call. We have tutors waiting, 3.30 to 5.30. You could call us at Bakersfield, 636-4357. Or you could call us from San Luis, San Luis Obispo, toll free, at 1-866-636-6284. Or you could even email us at dothemath at kern.org. Or you can also catch us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. A lot of different things going on. Yes. All right. So we do have phone tutors available until 530. We'll be heading back out to Thompson to uh, visit with the Timberwolves in just a little bit. Mm -hmm. April is out there getting uh, all of those students ready to go on live and then working with their problems while they're waiting as well. And it's a big day. It is. I uh, will say congratulations to Chuck all right. going with the uh, Kansas City Royals. <laughs> So obviously I had to go the opposite way, but congratulations <laughs> to the Royals and the victory for your World Series uh, win games, right there. Good games, good games. And uh, your son obviously enjoying it out there in Kansas yeah, City. Yeah, lives in Kansas City. They had, they had the parade today. They went, all went out to see it. It was a really great time they had right. there. Day off for everybody, right? It was, I think so. <laughs> all right, well, before we get to everything else, let's first take a look at today's Math in the News. <laughs> Mary Lou, I did this because you're here today, because usually <laughs> Tuesdays you're out at the school sites, but we're going to celebrate, I guess it, you call it a holiday today, it's National Sandwich Day. Yeah. Right. Sounds like a holiday. Yeah, right. yeah, it's a holiday. You were aware of this? No, I no. wasn't. Okay. No. I wish well, I would there you go. Have. See, I mean, I'm sure there were a lot of students out there going, and I didn't even know there was one. Yeah. And I don't know how long this has been in existence, no. but it is declared today National Sandwich Day. A little bit of history. You guys know how the sandwich came about, the history of it a little well, bit? Well, I know there is an Earl of Sandwich. Correct. And actually, he's, there is, he, he's in England. I, I yep. do know that. So, That's in the 1700s, all right, John Montague, the fourth Earl of Sandwich. Got it. All right. And what it says here is he ordered beef between slices of bread so he could eat it while playing cards. So, according to this. Keep his hands clean, yeah. I guess. Huh? Right. Well, you don't want the Yeah, bread. yeah. But imagine before that, I mean, you just... Just a chunk of meat and you eat it. Right. right. Just go. Animal-like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, The Atlantic, a magazine. Right. You guys familiar with this? I, I know of it, yeah. <laughs> so they uh, took a look at what is a sandwich, what makes something a sandwich. Okay. All right. And they said, having two exterior pieces of bread or bread-like product mostly horizontal in structure, portable, and something containing more than just a condiment. So, knowing that, let's take a look at the illustration that we have up on the board and see if you can tell me what's wrong with that. Oh, there's no bread on top. Right, there's no bread on top. That would be an open face sandwich. An yes. open face sandwich, right? <laughs> yes. So, right, there's all different types of sandwiches and so, but I mean, you know, like Dagwood, Dagwood even has a sandwich named after 
should have been in this morning's paper. I don't remember them saying anything about right, that. Right, I don't, yeah, Dagnus the cartoon or something, yeah. the, the comic didn't have anything about that. And the Hawaiian Islands, I think, were originally called the Sandwich Islands, if I'm not mistaken. I do not know that, but now I do. I think so. All right. So, a couple of other facts about sandwiches. The largest, according to Guinness, was a corned beef monstrosity made in 2005, <laughs> over 5,000 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The longest one in 2011, more than 2,400 feet. Wow. Movable ovens were needed to get this thing. 2,400 feet long. Somebody I mean, just, that's eight yeah. football fields, right? Well, well let me yeah. see, because you got 300 feet yeah. in a football field, so you've right. got eight football fields long Wow, is how long this sandwich is. And where was this at? Uh, I think that was in Lebanon. Wow. There was something else that was just on the news that was a um, Guinness World Record, but I can't remember if it was a sandwich, but it was something like that, that it was long, and they put it through ovens like that. Most expensive it's sandwich. You're going to New York City for this one. Yeah, of course, yeah, New of York course. City. Yeah. Quintessential grilled cheese, bread made with Dom Perignon champagne, <laughs> edible gold flakes, white truffle butter. I have not had any of those three <laughs> items I, I thus far. Edible gold flakes because a, that, that's on a lot of desserts. Okay. Really? Yeah. And a rare cheese. Comes served with South African lobster tomato bisque as a dipping sauce. Oh. And you can see I put it's greater than $200. Oh, That's the, You yeah. will pay more than $200 okay. for that quintessential grilled cheese. My goodness. So, that's the news of the day. Let's find out how a little math applies to it. Oh, I heard the music cut in, but we're not done quite yet. Yeah, we need yeah. to do a little math here. So, how many ways? We have done this type of problem on the program oh, before. Yes. So at a deli, you can order a sandwich with the following options, and I kept it simple. Right. Bread, white wheat sourdough. So you've got three types. No rye, no bagel. Uh, we can okay. get into all of that stuff, <laughs> but we're just keeping it simple. I mean, take a look at the meats. We have turkey, yeah, roast beef, that's yeah. it, yeah. okay? The cheese, provolone, and mozzarella. Okay. All right, so if you choose one of each, like you have to have a bread, a meat, and a cheese, mm -hmm. how many different combinations are there to do? Well, you take the number of options you have for each, each multiply them, so go three times two times two. There are 12 different sandwiches that you could make satisfying that requirement. And we don't get any of those here on Sandwich Day, huh? Yeah. Well, you know what you guys were, I mean, you knew it was Sandwich Day. You could have, I, there are plenty of places we out there. We could have the cheese yeah. and the meat we and the bread. And, uh, on, you know, great example. We could have, well, you know what, then we wouldn't get to the kids out of Thompson and our phone calls That's and everything right. else. But that is today's Math in the News. Students will come across problems like that, at least when they're in junior high. Yes. And we'll have to uh, deal with those types of things. And they're not that difficult. You yeah. can always give us a call if you need a little help with them. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530 on most Tuesdays and Wednesdays throughout the school year. Right now, a student from Patriot and a young phone caller, I believe, Nayeli. How are you today? Good. And you are a third grade student, correct? Yes. All right. As soon as you're ready, Nayeli, let's hear the math problem that you're working on. Lindsay has 10 inches of ribbon. She buys another three lengths of ribbon, each five inches long. How much ribbon does she have now? Okay, Nayeli, say that yes. one more time. Do we start with, she starts with 10 inches, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so she starts with 10 inches. Yes. And then after that, can you read the question again? Lindsay has 10 inches of ribbon. She buys another three inches of ribbon. She eats five inches long. How much ribbon does she have now? Okay. Three pieces. She, she buys them three more pieces that are each right, five inches lengths. long. Right, three more lengths. So she buys three more. Three pieces more. that are each five inches. five inches long. Okay. How's that? Perfect. So, Nayeli, do we need to know what the total is now? How yes. much she has? 25. Well, well, first of all, she buys three more five inches each, correct? Yes. What can we do? Should we add three plus five or should we multiply three times five? Add. Okay, we're going to be adding, right? So we have yes. three groups of, of five, right? So yes. if this is five, 
this is five, and this is five. We have three groups of our five inches, don't we? Yes. Yes? So if we look at it, we have five, ten, fifteen, correct? Yes. So we have fifteen inches that she bought, and we need to take these fifteen inches, and we need to add it on to her ten inches <coughs> that she has. And so, Nayeli, what's 15 plus 10? 25. 25. So, she has a total of 25 20. inches. Okay? Now, is that it? Do you have any other qu more questions? Yes. I have that birthday. That birthday is in four weeks. How many days is Okay, so it sounded okay. like it's four weeks until some event. Mm -hmm. It's four weeks until what? It's birthday. Okay, so a birthday? It's mm -hmm. four weeks till a birthday? Mm hmm Okay, and Nayeli, what do we need to find out? What the date the birthday is? Yes. Okay. Do we know what the day it starts on? Does it start on a Monday or a Sunday? We do not know. We so don't it's just know. four weeks from now. It's just four weeks from now. So like today is the, we have to figure out from four weeks from today. Today being Tuesday. Read the yeah. question one more time, Nayeli, just to make sure we need to know what you need to find out. That birthday is in four weeks. How many days is it? So how many days how many is it days until is the birthday, and then how do you show that on the number line? Got you. Okay, so how many days in for four weeks? And you have to show it on a number line? So mm -hmm. how many days are in a week? Mm. Do you know how many days are in a week? There's... So we start with Sunday, right? We have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So there's seven days in a week. So that is important information. We need to know that there's seven days in one week. Okay. Correct? So if we start at, it, and we have to show it on a number line. So let's start at zero, okay? So what we're really doing, Nayeli, if it's four weeks and we know that there's seven days in one week, we're going to do four groups with seven, okay? So on our number line, we have, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's seven, okay? We need to add another seven days to that, don't we? Yes. Seven plus seven is what? 14. Is 14, right? Mm -hmm. So now we have two groups of seven. Let's do another group because again we need four groups. So uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So now we're at 21. So here's seven, here's another seven, here's another seven. And then our last 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27, and 20. Eight. Now, Nayeli, looking at a number line, we know that their birthday is going to be in how many days? What's that last number right there? Um, is that 28? 28. Yeah. So we know that their birthday is going to be in 28 days. Okay? Because again, if their birthday is in four weeks and we need to know how many days it, it is, we know that there's seven days in one week, so we have four groups of seven, giving us the birthday being in 28 days. Okay? Okay. All Nicely right. done. Nayeli, you still online with us for a moment? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, because it is National Sandwich Day, we're going to award you a sandwich. Oh, All right. Yeah. So I think it's good for uh, any type of sandwich at Johnny Rocket. So congratulations on that. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530. Don't forget if you're calling from outlying areas of Kern County as well as San Luis Obispo County, that phone number is toll free at 1-866-636-6284.
Doc Bernstein's Ice Cream wow. Lab, free ice cream for anybody calling on the coast. Yep. Put that with your sandwich and uh, yeah. you know, make a complete meal out of that. All right, right now I believe we're ready. We're going to head out to uh, see the Timberwolves of Thompson with April. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good. You got a lot of kids working out there? Yes. We're here live with Leah. She's an eighth grader here at Thompson Junior High. Hi, Leah. Hi. Did you know I used to go to Thompson? No. I was a Tyrolean. What is that? I don't know. That's why they changed the name to Timberwolves. So yeah. today we are going to do a distance problem. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So how, how are we going to set this up? Um, Where are we going to start this? We're going to start this with the square root. Okay. So let's make that happen. Well, let's bring it down here. Let's move the square root down here and then we'll start and then we'll put things in because we have to change the parentheses a little bit. So give me another square root right here. Okay, make it really long. Okay, so what are we gonna put inside here? Um, inside here, we're gonna put the parentheses, the first one, which is one. Let's do these numbers right here. One. Just like it is right here. Three minus one. So the exponent of two plus two in parentheses plus another seven to the exponent of two. Okay, and we are we have two points here and we're trying to find the distance of these those two points. So the formula that you just gave me comes from the distance formula, which is x of two minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. So we took these coordinates and arranged them here. So where should we go from here? From here, you want to subtract in the parentheses. Okay. Like you're doing, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Okay. So you want to start with the first ones. Come 3 order. minus 1 in order the Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Word of operations, great. 3 minus 1 equals 2. So you want to bring down that exponent of 2. Okay. And the plus sign. And you do the other parentheses. 7 plus 2 is 9. Okay. Then you want to bring down the exponent of 2. So we, since we didn't work on the outside, we have to make sure we bring that exponent down. Mm -hmm. um, are we missing anything here? Should we bring something else down? And you should also bring down the square root sign. Beautiful. And then from here, you want to do the exponents. Using so, the order of operation again, right? Yep. And 2 times 2 again, which is why the exponent is 2. Okay. Which is so are you multiplying two this, this exponent or two by two by two. Okay. And then you bring down the plus sign because you didn't use it yet. All right. And then you want to do um, nine times nine. So nine times nine is eighty one. So this is telling us to multiply by itself, correct? Yes. All right. And then you bring down the square root sign. Great job. And with the square root sign, you want to do the addition now. So 4 plus 81 equals 85. So we're going to move over here. All right. Is 85 square root. So do you know, can we approximate the value of this square root? Can we find yes. a decimal approximation of this square root? Yes. So do you, you have want, a process for that? Yes. So okay. You want Just write to, it right here. What are we going to do with that? You really want to find out what is the square root, approximate square root of 85. So there's going to be a bigger number, which is also a square root, okay. that is divided evenly. And the other one is another square root, which is divided And evenly. that one is, if this one's bigger, that one has to be smaller. smaller. Okay. So because you know that 85 is going to stay down the middle, you bring it down. So I'm going to bring the square root of 85 down. Nice. And then... What numbers do I fill in on the right and left of 85? On the right and left of 85, um, you would want to fill in 100 because... So where does the 100 come from? 100 comes from 10 times 10. So that's a perfect square, and it's and coming it's from 10 square. times 10. Nice. 
And then what is smaller than 10? 9. So 9 times 9 is 81. Okay. Which, which is smaller is, than 85. And another perfect square. And so you want to bring down the perfect square that times it that gets that answer. Okay. So the square so root nine. of 81 is 9. And the square root of 100 is 10. Beautiful. So from here. So what do we know? From here, what do we know about the square root of 85 that it is? It is actually more closer to 81, which is 9. Okay. And then it will be to 100. Perfect. Somewhere between 81 and 100, closer to somewhere between the square root of 81 and the square root of 100, closer to the square root of 81. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are we about to make? We're making a... We're about to make an approximate. What kind of number are we going to make? We're going to probably be writing a decimal. A decimal. Very nice. <laughs> We're writing a decimal for sure. So, so that decimal, since the square root of 85 is closer to the square root of 81, the decimal is going to be? It's going to be 9 point, like, 9 point. No, you don't want to go over 9.5. Okay. So it's going to probably be like 9.2, 9.3. Good. Sounds good. So from here, do you want to try the closest one to 9.1? Okay. So I would try 9.2. So off, off up here, 9.2. So what are we doing up here? Times 9.2. Oh, we're checking. Yes. So we're guessing and checking, right? Yes. Okay, so we're going to guess and check. Sounds good. So 2 times 2 is 4. 9 times 2 is 18. And you want to add a 0 because you're going to mix. Placeholder, Placeholder. Right. And 9 times 2 is 18. You want to add the 1 up here. 9 times 9, 81 plus 1. It's 82. The answer for this would be 4, 16. You add the one up here. So 3, 4. 84.64. Why'd you put the decimal there? Because you have one decimal here, so that's one jump. That's the second jump. So, so jump you need to twice. jump twice down here at the bottom. So your answer is 84.64. Three times nine times point two times nine point two. And eighty four and sixty four hundreds uh, uh, rounds up, to, rounds the up nearest, to the nearest ten. So or the nearest what digit is this place value here? Place um hundreds. So the one right on the decimal is mm -hmm. this is the ones place and then mm -hmm. this is the tens place. So if we round here to the nearest one, it'd get us to eighty four will become eighty five. Okay. So your answer, the approximate answer of the square root of 85 is, you want to make sure you put the squiggly lines I like because it. it's not the actual exactly. value. Exactly. So Perfect. the answer of it is 9.2. Very nicely done. Right. Thanks for coming up and back to you, Mike. Very nicely done. Now, April, you're still with me, right? Yes. Okay, let Leah know that because that was such a great problem, we're going to have her now entered into the drawing for the Bakersfield Condors Family 4-Pack. And Very nice. Leah, I have a little bit of homework for you. So Leah can hear me easily enough right now? Yes. Okay, Leah, I need you to do me a favor, and maybe if you can do this in the next 20 minutes or so, find out what a Tyrolean is when <laughs> April was at Thompson, and they were named the Thompson Tyroleans, and then you can report back to us later in the program. How's that? Let's not talk about how long ago that was. <laughs> well, maybe go to uh, the administration and they might be able to help you out as well. Anyway, we'll check back in with you guys in a little bit. Nicely right. done out of Thompson. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530. Right now, we'll go to the phones and a student from Paul Elementary, Caleb. How are you, Caleb? Hello? Yes, how are you today? Good. And what grade are you in, Caleb? Uh, All right, as soon as you're ready, let's hear the math problem you're working on. And Caleb, we may need to turn down the volume on your TV set so that you can hear us only over the phone and not the TV because then there will be a little bit of a delay there. Okay, uh, my problem is uh, 50. It's 1,358 divided into 250. 1,358 divided, divided by into or divided by? Divided by. So this symbol, the, is it the line and the two dots? Yeah, it's the line and two dots. Okay, divided by 50? Yes. All right, so now we're going to do this by hand, right? So we're going to use a division box, right? 
Yes. And here's where you got to be careful. What's dividing into what, right? The divisor is 50, isn't it? So we're dividing by 50. That's going to go out in front, doesn't it? Yes. All right. So inside the box is going to be, well, we call this the dividend. That's the 1,358, OK? So it's okay. important, important when we change from one form to the other that we change that division divided by into divided into, all right? Because so, that's how you said it, isn't it? Yeah. All right, now here's the question. How do you want the answer written? Do we want it as a decimal, a fraction, or a remainder? A remainder. A remainder, OK. So let's go ahead and do this long division, right? So we know we, we're dividing by 50, and 50 doesn't go into 1, does it? Um, no. Doesn't go into 13, so 50 is going to go into 135. About how many times does 50 go into 135? Um, Pretty easy to count by 50s, right? 50, 100, 150, right? So how many 50s does it take to go into 135? One? Um, <laughs> Two? So I know that 250s is going to be 100, isn't it? Yes. I'm going to put that 2 over the 5 because it's over 135. And 2 times 50 is easy. That's 100, isn't it? Yes. So now when I subtract, uh, pretty easy to subtract here, 35, isn't it? Yes. So now we bring down the 8. And 50 goes into 358. How many times? Well, um, um, Good way to estimate. Five goes into thirty-five. How many times? I I need to write it. Stop. Um, Sorry, Caleb. I can't hear you. You still there? Yeah. Okay. So five goes into thirty-five. How many times? Um, I say uh about. Well, we know 5 times 5 is 25. That's easy. 5 times 6 is? 5 times 6 is um, 30. 30. And so 5 times 7 is? Five times seven 35, is. isn't it? Yeah. So a good first guess would be five, 50 goes into 358. Let's try 7. Because we know that 7 times 0 is 0. 7 times 5 is 35. We got pretty close, didn't we? When we subtract, we get 8. And since we've run out of digits, and you said we're writing our answer as a remainder, we don't have to worry about a fraction or a decimal. We're going to write this as 27 remainder 8. And that would be the answer to this problem. OK, thanks for the call. Nicely done, Caleb. Do remember, if you have some more problems like that, we do have phone tutors available until 5.30 this afternoon. We had some family come from out of town, and they're doing the national parks in California. Oh. So, of course, I gave them a bunch of math cards <laughs> to distribute throughout the national parks in California and on their way back to Minnesota. So I know that Mackenzie, our associate producer, is working on Skyping with the uh, caller we have from Ohio. Oh. Remember, yes. she calls in quite frequently, and uh, that'll be a way where we can actually see her and you know, just that kind of be fun cool. doing that. But we'll see how long it takes for somebody from Minnesota to uh, get a hold of us and say, hey, I heard about this do the math thing. And hey, we'll <laughs> see. Anyway, we'll have some more phone calls and some more problems to do right after this. Today we're in San Luis Obispo. We're at Laguna Middle School, home of the Lancers. And today we're here to do the Once again, we're in San Luis Obispo, we're at Laguna Middle School, and right now I've got 7th grade student Alex with us. And Alex, how are you today? I'm doing good. Now, I know that you are doing good, you're doing well, and you're going to mm -hmm. add some numbers. And I have always okay. given the students the choice of what they would like to do, and you said it is my choice. And mm -hmm. I said, would you like to add mixed numbers or numbers in the billions? And you said it's my choice, okay? Mm -hmm. If we did numbers in the billions, 
Could I make them really difficult for you? Sure. Okay, since you're such a good sport, we're going to go ahead and do mixed fractions because you're good to go either way. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, why don't you give me a, a single digit? Two. Two? And another one? Seven. Seven. All right, let's go ahead and make our fractions now. Uh, would you like common denominators or could we make them different right now? You can choose again. No, I already chose the type of problem, so now it is up to you. Fine. What would you like? Different. Different, okay. What would you like the first number to be? Three. And this one? Twelve. Twelve. Nice numbers, those will work nicely together. Uh, okay, let's get some numerators on there. Two. Seven. Excellent. Go ahead and read these mixed numbers for me. Two and two-thirds and seven and seven-twelfths. Perfect. How do we go about doing this? First, you want to find a common denominator for the fractions. Okay. So the common denominator would be 12. Perfect. Three goes into 12. One of these, and then three goes into 12 four times. So three times four is 12. And then 12 times one is 12. So then you have to do the numerators. Mm -hmm. And you multiply three by four to get 12. Multiply two by four to get eight, and then Seven times one, seven, and now you can add these two. And why can we add them now? Because they have a common denominator. Excellent. So eight plus seven would give you fifteen twelfths. And then you add the numbers. You have that. So two plus seven is nine. And now you have to put these together, and you have to simplify this. So 15, 12 goes into 15 once. Okay. So you would add 1 to that. Perfect, because we're taking 12 twelfths out of this, which is a whole Six. 1. And like you said, we're adding it to the 9. So now we have 10. Perfect. And then 15 minus 12 gets three, so we have three left over. Ten and three twelfths. Perfect. But three twelfths is not simplified. How do you know? Because I know that three can go into twelve. So you can simplify this. Yes. Okay. So, right? Ten. And then three goes into twelve. You can divide 3 by 3, and you can divide 12 by 3. You have 1, 3 divided by 3 is 3, then 12 divided by 3 is 4. And can we simplify 1 fourth? No. How do you know? Because you can't divide 1 by anything other than 1. Right, so we know that we're finished, right? So yes. go ahead and read the problem for us one more time in the final answer that you've got. 2 and 2 thirds minus 7 and 7 twelfths. Plus seven, seven twelfths is ten and one fourth. Okay, and then let's just take a look at it. This is a little more than half, isn't it? Yes. So two and a half and seven and a half, right? So two and a half and seven and a half, that's going to be about nine, and another one is ten, so it's going to be around ten, isn't it? Just yes. by estimating it, and we know that it comes out ten and one fourth. Alex, nicely done. And once again, a big thanks to all of the staff and students. It is truly a pleasure when we get to go out and do those nice. 
episodes. And uh, much like when you go out to the schools, yes. like April is out today, we'll be visiting Thompson in just a little while. But do remember, we have phone tutors available until 5.30. Today is November 3rd. The reason I bring that up, because we will obviously have a live program again next week. However, next, or tomorrow, but next week, the 10th and 11th, there will be no live programming because of Veterans Day. Right. So there will be no live programming or phone tutors for you to phone into next week, the 10th and 11th of November uh, because of that holiday. So if you need help, call today or tomorrow. Right now we have uh, some students working on equations. So yes. let's go ahead and take a look at one of these right now. Okay. We have negative 5n plus 17 minus 8n is equal to 56. Okay, so an equation is um, something that has two equal equations, well on both sides. It's like a balance scale. What has, happens on this side has to equal this side. So the first thing we want to do is we want to combine our like terms. And that is anything obviously with the n variable because the n variable, again, is, represents the same unknown number. So we're going to combine these. And noticing they're both negative, since they're both negative, we want to group those negatives together because we're really moving farther over on the number line to the left. So negative 5 and negative 8 gives us a negative 13n plus, bring down our 17 because there's nothing else to compare that with, equals 56. So now we're actually going to do order of operations backwards because we're trying to find the unknown number. So we want to get n by itself. We have an answer. Our answer is 56 over here to our equation. But we need to find what this unknown number is. So we have to work backwards with order of operation. And the last step is always to add or subtract. So that's where we're going to start. So we're going to start here with that 17. We're going to get rid of that. And by getting rid of it, we're using our inverse operation. So I'm doing the opposite. I'm subtracting because I need to zero it out on this side. And what I do to this side, we have to do to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 17 from both sides, getting rid of that. And then obviously subtracting, we have our 16 minus 7, which is 9. And then again, 4 minus 1, which is 3. Now I want to bring down my negative 13n and equals our 39. And this is, again, it says multiplication. I need to get rid of this negative 13. And I'm not going to add or subtract this time because this is multiplication. And in order to get rid of it, what we want to do is the opposite of multiplication, and that is to divide. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 13 because we know negative 13 divided by negative 13 equals 1. And 1 times any number equals itself according to our identity property. So again, we got rid of that, giving me n by itself, which that was our objective, is to get n by itself. And we're going to divide 39 divided by negative 13. And I do believe that's going to give us a negative, because a positive and a negative is a negative. And that's going to give us a negative 3. And Mike, do you always ask for them to double check their work? Indeed, they need to. OK. So what we're going to do to make sure that this is correct, we're going to replace n right here with our negative 13. So first negative of all, three. negative 3. Right. Thank you. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and, and get rid of this so we have some room. So let's rewrite it. Negative 5 times negative 3 plus 17 minus 8 times our negative 3. Does this all equal 56? OK. Again, now we have to do our order of operations correctly. Let's multiply first. So a negative times a negative gives us a positive 15 bring down our 17. Now this is where a lot of students will make a mistake. They're going to want to say 17 minus 8. Order of operations tells us to multiply first. So we're going to bring down our 17 and we're going to multiply. This 8 is a negative because of the minus sign. So we have a negative times a negative which gives us a positive 24. And let's go ahead and group all these numbers together and see if it all comes out correctly. 
So 5 and 4 is 9, 9 and 7 is 16, and then we have 2, 3, 4, and 5, and I do believe that it, it works. There All you right. go. Nicely done, and nice explanation and uh, illustration of carrying that negative throughout yeah. mm -hmm. and making sure that students remember that you're dividing by a negative 13 and that in that case, the negative 8, because a lot of students see the 8 and yeah. they just think it's 8 when it actually is negative 8. Yes. So things like that to remember. We do have phone tutors available until 5.30, but we also have students working live at a Thompson Junior High, home of the Timberwolves, formerly known as the Tyrolians, and April was in the school then. How are you, April? I'm good. How are you? Good. So we're here. We're still trying to figure out what a Tyrolean is. All right. But in the meantime, I've got Alex here at Thompson Junior High. We're live, and he's in the seventh grade. So he's got this problem here. Um, a diver dove to a location six and three-fifths meters below sea level. He then dove to a second location eight and one-fifth meters below sea level. How many meters are there between the two locations? So what we're going to do first um, is try to figure out what pieces of this word problem that are really important, and then we're going to do what's called marking the text. So Alex is going to walk us through how to mark the text so we can figure out where to attack this problem. So, we box the question first, Let's... So we're boxing the question, why? Um, because... <laughs> why are we boxing the question? Um, I'm not really sure. So, is this what we need to find out? Oh, yeah. So is this pretty important? Yeah. So we're going to put a box around it to remind us no. where we're going, yeah. what the end result is, okay? And now, what else do we need? Oh, What's in? We need to circle how far he went. Okay, so we're we're gonna circle key words or key numbers and the words that go with them. So eight and one fifth meters. That's how far he went. And then he went six and three fifths of a meter. Okay. And then you'll circle, you'll underline like um, if it was below or above sea level. So what does that tell us? If it's below, what does that mean? It's what type of number? It's a negative. Okay, so that's important. So that's a key process. We're going to understand, underline that process. And we've got another below sea level. Um, word problems are not always that easy, right? What's a, an easy way to deal with word problems? What, what should we do? Draw a picture. Let's draw a picture. So we've got a diver, right? And he is, or have something to do with sea level, so where should we start our picture? Um, at the sea level. At the sea level. Good job, people, mother. And you're drawing this line here because? It's how uh, far he went. Where did he go? He went below the sea level. Okay, so we're drawing the line below the sea level because that's where the diver is. All right, and then the zero is the ground. So who are we talking about in our problem? Uh, a diver. Okay, let's represent him in the picture. So what do we know? He dove, uh, oh wait, let's label our sea level there. So you have one, two, Great job. So why is it important to put these halves here? Um, because if you didn't, you wouldn't know where six was or six and a half. Okay, so, and because we have some fractions here, we're going to split it up so that we know where to place um, our diver between the numbers, right? Yes. Okay, so what do we know about his first dive here? Um, that he dove to this, to about the, um, Six and three-fifths line. Okay, so let's mark that there. And then Can we mark his his dive there? How far is it? It's six and three -fifths. Nice. And so then what does the diver do? Uh, he went down again. Takes another dive <laughs> around the six and three-fifths. This time he dives a little bit further down. To about eight and one fifth. Okay. 
So eight and one fifth meters there. First dive is six and three fifths meters. So the box. What did you box and what does it say? Oh, I boxed how many meters are there between the two locations? So how many meters are there between the two locations? How can I find out the number of meters between the two locations? You subtract six and three fifths and eight and one fifth. Okay. So which does it matter which number we put first? Um sometimes it does, but because they're the same because they're both negative. So go ahead and write it. So we've got some mixed numbers here. We're going to subtract six and three fifths from eight and one fifths. These are both negatives. Do you need to represent that right here, that they're negatives, or are we okay with the numbers the way that they are? And then because it's subtraction, you have to keep that one, change that, and change that. Okay, so change, change? Yeah, so that would be negative eight and one fifth plus negative oh, positive six and three fifths. Okay, so we've got a negative um, mixed number here and a positive mixed number. Are we going to add those or are we going to subtract those? We're going to subtract those. We're still going to subtract. Okay, so what's the best way we're going to re approach this subtraction? Um, my teacher told me that we could subtract this, the 6 and the negative 8 first. Okay. And then do the fractions. Okay, let's do that. So it'd be negative 8 minus... Or plus, because it's going to be plus. We already dealt with the subtraction over here, so we're going to just keep it right there. Plus that. Okay. So... so That'd be two. Okay. So this now equals two as the fraction. Okay. So this is going to be a negative two or a positive two? That is going to be negative okay. two. Go ahead. And then... How do we deal with the fractions? I would say you'd find the common denominator, but that's already found. So that's we already have the common denominator. So you'd subtract the three... And then that would give me two and three. Okay. So it says how many meters, and since this is distance, we've got a negative number here, right? Um, but since it's distance, do you know if distance comes a negative or no? Um, no. No. So when we're talking about the meters, we're just going to talk about how far is one location from the other location? How many meters? That'd be two and two, two over five. Okay, so is there a special way to write this? How do I answer the question? Um, you can put the diver. So the diver dove. Um, the diver dove two and two. Wait. Oh, sorry. I don't really know how to write this. So if it says, how many meters are there between the two locations? Um, and we take out at least how many? how many. Can we use these words to formulate an answer? Can we start with this word since you have the there? Can oh. we say there? There. Wait, do change this to, to there? there? Yeah. There. There was two and two fifths. Um, but. Oh, freeze. Um, how many? Oh, there were. So since we're talking about meters, should we include that in our response? Yes. Because we circled it when we had it up here, right? So we should yeah. probably... Okay, let's go. So there was two and two over fifths meter meters um, between the...
two patients. Very nicely done. So was the picture helpful at all? Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> and I like the way you marked the text. That's the new thing that we're doing. Great job. Yay! <laughs> all right, nicely done. You guys all working hard out there at Thompson Junior High. We do have phone tutors available until 530-636-4357 is the phone number. Mary Lou's been doing some interesting things with the kids in class. Yes. What have you guys been working on this week? Okay, we've been working on um, equations as well, but a little bit different. We have more of a word problem with our equations. Okay. So, um, my students have a problem that looks similar to this. It's a triangle. And it's given this information. And also, with this picture, so one side is 2x, another side is 23, and the bottom, the base is x plus 3. But they're also given that the perimeter equals 76. Okay? So they have been asked to make an equation from this information first, and then second, they needed to solve for x. So they had to understand what, what the perimeter is. Is perimeter multiplying all the sides or is perimeter adding all sides? Well, the perimeter is to add all the sides together. Area is multiplying. So what we first want to do is we first want to make our equation. So we're going to take our 2x plus, we have our x plus 3 with our base, plus our 23, because we know that if we add up all three sides together, we know that it has to equal 76. Going from there, our next step is to solve for x. So the first thing we need to do is combine our like terms. So we're going to combine all of our x's and then our constant terms together. The biggest mistake a lot of students make is this one x by itself. Remember, this is 1x. A lot of students forget about that. And it's always helpful to write that 1 by it to help you remember. So we have our 2x plus our 1x. Combining those together gives us a total of 3x. And then we're going to look at our constant terms that have no variable with it. And we could simply add our 3 plus 23, which gives us 26 equals 76. So what we did is we simplified this down. Now we have a two-step equation for us to solve. And again, we're working backwards. So we're going to subtract our 26 first from both sides because we want to zero it out from the left side. We have our 3x equals 50. Now, again, we're doing our inverse of multiplication. 3 times what number is 50? Well, we know that 3 doesn't go into 50 equally. So we're going to need to do some division here. So we know that 50 is our dividend, and our divisor is 3, so that goes outside. And we know that 3 goes into 5 one time. We have 2 left over, bringing down our 0. 3 goes into 20 six times giving us 18, and this is really where you can stop. A lot of students want to keep going and going and going with decimals, but we really don't need to. We have a fraction already right here. Our fraction is, first of all, we have a whole number 16. Our remainder is our numerator, and our divisor is our denominator. So we know that x, well, after dividing 3, let's make sure we show that, we know that x has to equal our 16 and 2 thirds. And again, a lot of students just want to keep going on with the decimal. 2 thirds is really a repeating decimal, and you would have a 66666 keep going and going and going where here we could quickly see and stop our work right there and have our answer. And there you go. All right, because a lot of students might see, all right, well, we're going to add a zero, and they're going to have 20, and then yes. they multiply by 6 again, and they keep, yeah. so. And they're going to keep going and going and get frustrated. And here it's quick and easy. We could see it's a mixed number. And I'm sure they love having a mixed number as their answer in that problem. Yeah. They probably were like, yeah. <laughs> throw them off a little bit right there. 
636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530 on most Tuesdays and Wednesdays. The reason I bring that up is because next week, once again, the 10th and 11th of November, there will be no live broadcast those two days, nor phone tutors available because of the holiday Veterans Day. Right now, we're going to head back out to Thompson Junior High. And I know that April is out there with a couple of students and the principal as well. And April, uh, it's been a couple of years since you've been there. Perhaps the principal can lead us into a little bit of the Tyrolean thing, or did Leah find anything out? We're going to, as a combination, but first I want to thank Alex and Leah for being so wonderful today and so helpful. So I'm going to give them a shirt and a certificate. Leah, what'd you find out? So we I found out, out that um, while we were, they were working out problems, that the Tyrolean was a folk dance. So I don't think that's what that meant. And then Mr. Pope, he found out. Well, most of the people don't know what a Tyrolean is. And if they, if they do know, they don't admit it because it shows how, how old they are. <laughs> uh, because um, we used to be a Tyrolean here at Thompson. That was a long time ago. But the reason they changed it, as they mentioned earlier in the show, nobody knew what a Tyrolean was. So they said, we've got to make it easier. So we changed the Timberwolves. But if you were to Google it, you'd find things like uh, like a hat, Tyrolean hat, uh, Tyrolean airlines, uh, Tyrolean ski slope. There's a famous one in Austria. But like, uh, um, but also what what I like to say is it's also a Tyrolean hound dog. And, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say that that's what it was. It was after the hound dog because a dog. Uh, is a two-syllable word. A lot of people don't know that. If you say it correctly, the hog. <laughs> uh, dogs are strong and they're smart, they're intelligent, they're lovable, and so I think that's why the Thompson Timberwolves used to be uh, Tyrolians. Very nice, and thank you so much, ACES program here at Thompson, for allowing us to come out. Can you tell us um, what's going on with the ACES program here? We love our ACES program at Thompson Junior High School, um, primarily because when I get a phone call from a parent that's frustrated uh, about a student's progress, uh, maybe their grades aren't as well as they'd like to see them, they're struggling in certain classes, uh, ACES is my go-to program because every day at ACES, there's a homework hour help. They can get homework help every day in the ACES program. Not only that, we have certificated teachers uh, that stay every day after school and get help. The kids can get help in certain subjects. Uh, and so they get that homework help. They get that tutoring, free tutoring from a teacher after school. But not only that, we have uh, extracurricular activities like art and we have cooking and we have gardening we have computer science and those have been taken out of the school due to budget cuts but you can still get them in the aces program so that's why we like it are there any field trips or anything the students going on in that program uh, i'm not familiar with any any field trips that uh, we we go on in aces um, but like i said lots of extracurricular activities that have been taken out of the schools you can uh, access them through the aces program so it's a great program is there any other things that you do to keep the students involved here at Thompson? We like to do all kinds of things to keep them involved. As you know, you're a teacher yourself over at Stone Creek Junior High. I had to get that in there for you. <laughs> uh, keeping kids busy is yes. important. So Very we have uh, student government, we have oral language, we have battle of the books. Those are great, great programs that take place after school, work together with ACES. They start them at the uh, elementaries. It's great to sponsor those programs here at the junior high. They can keep doing those activities. So. All right, nicely done. Thank you to everybody out of Thompson Junior High and uh, the dog. I thought it was a dog. All right, let's find out who's going to the Condors. All right, it is Caleb from Paula and Elementary. All right, nicely done. And until we meet again, continue to do the math. Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, California Resources Corporation, Kern County Water Agency, Southern California Edison, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, and Bakersfield City School District. 
with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California.